Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 16 of Wide Open with Chris Brandt. Hosted by Chris Brandt. <laughs> Co-hosted by Ross Robinson. Special guest, Kyle Pulsifer. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm enjoying that. Maybe, it, voice. maybe I should do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Mm. We're uh, still up at the Grizz. We're up at Grizzly Lodge, our uh, our yearly December British Columbia trip, and we thought it'd be a good idea to uh, get Kyle on back on. How's number it going, everyone. <laughs> number. I was on number one, right? Two, two. two. Yeah. Oh, close. Heck yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But if you're not first, you're last, Kyle. But, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I've come it, to realize that. <laughs> that is one of our most downloaded episodes, though, probably because Kyle was on it. Probably. Uh, I think just everybody wants a job here. <laughs> yeah, and you and you got one. Yeah. yeah. And you still have one. Actually. I know. <laughs> Managed to hold on to it. Yeah. Well, Kyle, you've... Um, so we're here at Grizzly, and, um, that you know, I was thinking about this this morning. You've got to ride... Well, you had never been out of the United States until you came riding with us. Well, you've been to Canada hunting, right? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, since then, you've been to, you know, you've ridden one of the coolest places in the world of British Columbia here at Grizzly Lodge, um, obviously Colorado, and you've been south of the equator to go ride snowmobiles in the Andes Mountains in Chile in August. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say I've done a lot and seen a lot <laughs> that I wouldn't have without working here in a pretty short period of time yeah what uh what's been your favorite like i mean you know we have we have the just how hard it is to ride in colorado right with the elevation and and the type of snow we have and no power and all of that and then uh which you know you you rode a turbo for your first year uh <laughs> how did how did you let every that day slide what him riding a turbo? Oh, I I just did it for day. the entertainment. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by 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 the end of the season, um, you know, you were just flat out worn out, and yeah, the sled was too a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. So, um, you you know that that was kind of year one in Colorado, and uh, but then you've and then to expose you to BC and show you like. I mean, here we have power. We have base of snow, lots of snow, um, some absolutely incredible terrain. Uh, yeah. Right. And then, and then Chile, right? And you where you're riding around volcanoes and um, just riding when not many other people in the world are riding. Yeah. So what what's been your favorite so far? Um, probably this year in Chile we got some rain and dropped into some pretty awesome creek bottoms that you wouldn't normally be in that were pretty high consequence and just kind of fun to jump around, put around and then get stuck and just look around where you're at. And uh, there's a lot to take in there. There there was so much, we had so much base there, more base than I'd ever been seen down there. And then it like turned to spring snow for a few days. And yeah, you could go in the bottom of these things that usually is like, Never Never Land and poke around and stuff. Yeah, we had a because couple, it was so filled in, so filled mm-hmm. in in the very bottom. Yeah, you knew you could kind of get out. And then there's, I mean, they're like so steep on each side. There's logs that go across them, and there's like a ten foot bridges that you, wow. you like could damn near go under. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's I think that's kind of interesting that, um, you know, be, between those three, Colorado, Chile, and BC. Your favorite is riding in the rain down in South America, <laughs> right? And and I think that I I would agree. I mean I I I mean I love riding up here. I love how technical Colorado is, but there is just something magical as a snowmobiler to be in somewhere that doesn't get ridden essentially um, in the middle of the summer. And you know when we go down there, and I don't know if this is the same for you guys, but. In Colorado, we know every nook and cranny uh, where we ride, pretty mm-hmm. much, right? I mean, we're still we still mm-hmm. find stuff, which is cool. I mean, that's that's a really fun part. And up here, 
for sure. Um, we, I get lost every time. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I really have no idea where I'm going, and I don't know how the heck we get the group back. Like, even yesterday, Kyle's like, all right, guys, well, I've only been down in here once. So Every, Everybody's uh, coming what? to me like, where are we at? Where are we going? <laughs> what are we doing? I'm like, see that track? That's as much as I know. I'm yeah. guessing we're going that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but with that, you know, the, the sense of exploration is like no other down in Chile. And I mean, it's, I think it's all about the, you know, the travel is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of travel, how'd that work out for you this year? Oh man, you shouldn't have let me go alone. <laughs> I needed some help. You needed a travel well, buddy. it took me two and a half days, a couple extra airports, a couple <laughs> extra tickets bought, a couple extra tickets. Oh, I my. thought I was like buckling up to guide a full group by myself. I didn't know if you were going to make it. <laughs> make it and then, are you guys, do, do I have a ticket going home? I don't know, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? You should. And Oh, my gosh. So, um, that was, <laughs> yeah, so that, um, I, I, I think, I think it's, that's, that's kind of, and, and Ross, what, I mean, out of the three, what's, what's your fave? Uh, man, I don't know. It's a tough one. I mean, it's so easy to say chili because it's so much easier to put everything into perspective of how cool that whole situation is. Um, so it's, it's like, how can you have a bad day down there? Mm-hmm. You can't because, and really the, it, the, it goes the same here as well as, you know, Colorado. So how can you have a bad day? How can you have a bad yeah. day? Right. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I, I enjoy the technical riding in Colorado for sure. Um, chili for sure. And, I mean, it, and any of them at their best day are going to match each other. Um, yeah, that's a good point. But I, I, I do love the whole Chile experience for what it is. And yeah. this was the first year when Kyle and I were down. Somehow you, he let you let Kyle and I run the show down there. That was aggressive. <laughs> um, this was the first year where I was like, oh, I could stay a few extra days. Where, you, as in the past, I was more ready to come home or whatever. But yeah, I think the experience down there is second to none. Cool. Well, let's talk about since we have Kyle on. Yeah, um, Kyle, we got tons of stories and memories already in this short, brief tenure that you've been uh, a part of BBA. Um, what's some that stick out? I mean, it, it could be. I mean, you're a character in the shop. You're you've got a work <laughs> ethic of a freaking madman, uh, which which uh, you know it it really does. It's funny. I see. And I've talked about this uh, when you've not been on, but, you know, I see a lot of uh, me and you at, at, at your age. Uh, how old are you? 22. The and, ripe age of 22. And single. Um, <laughs> how And, you know, it's, fu- it's funny. When I was your age, I just remember, um, you know, multiple nights working on my snowmobile and, you know, jamming out to probably Metallica back then, um, you know, working and, and I look outside, I'm like, damn, is that, oh, that is the sun coming up. Oh, huh. Well, I guess I'll just keep working. <laughs> I guess, uh, um, and you know, I just, when, when you're, you're passionate about something and, um, for me, I have a hard time of stopping at something before the project is done. I like to see it to completion, get it done, move forward to the next. And um, obviously because you never end up going to lunch with Ross because you're never done with something. (laughs) Um, You, you live the same way, but so, you know, you have, you have all these things with, within the business to, to chat about. I mean, whether it's been, you know, a, a crazy sled build that you've done, a day on the hill, um, a moment, uh, you know, like, well, shoot, yesterday we created one, right? You got in a little bit of a pickle yesterday. and Oh, yeah. How's that hip feeling today? It's a little tender, but, you know, it's a long ways from the heart. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's something that sticks out to you? Um, give, give us a story. Give us a Kyle Pulsifer story. Those... The biggest thing that sticks out to me and one of the things I look forward to are the ends of the day when we go on a one more line yeah. and then that one more line turns into all of us funneling into a junk hole where we spend multiple times until we're about, till it's dark and the cook is about to kill us because we're late for dinner <laughs> and just, just getting in there and then none of us have a personality where we give up. 
Yep. Until I don't think we ever win. That's the biggest thing. We just keep fighting. Yeah. F- pick a harder line. Pick a harder something. Somebody's yep. always like anteing up. Yeah. There's always in the next. That's the one thing too. There's always the next line. There's always a tree you could have gone above or mm-hmm. something. It's funny. Like at three thirty, we've we're all getting spent. Right. I mean, we've we've spent the day digging, and already I'm. I'm thinking about Kyle giving me that nod and the look like, Hey dude, let's go up. Let's go up. And I'm, I'm already, I've already got my answer. Kyle, dude, <laughs> we didn't get out until six 30 last night and we're going home. And you know, I, we get the group and, and then we'll pass by that one little spot and I stop and I shouldn't have stopped. Don't stop. Don't stop. And I stop and I look back and the group is just sitting on their snowmobile with their head bobbing, you know? <laughs> And I'm like, I still, I got one more in me. And then, sure enough, six thirty later, here we are, <laughs> upside down, chopping down a freaking stump that's in between the track or something stupid. Yeah. Um, but actually, we had we had quite a few moments like that last year where we got to we, you know, and that's what we need as as not only guides but riders to you know we're we're out there just like we're trying to push our our clients. We need to push ourselves as well. And, and, you know, talking about where you have come riding wise, I mean, again, just for those of you guys who haven't heard, listened to podcast number two, uh, which you should now that Kyle's on here again, um, you, you, you were a client and it's funny to, if you think back and look at your skill set back then, uh-huh. right. Uh, and versus right now and, and, yeah, it's it's really cool to see the how quick the progression happens. And uh, I say this about anything. I mean, anybody if it, if you ride six days a week, you're going to get better. Um, but kind of to a certain point, you still have to to push yourself. Mm-hmm. You still have to. Um, and I think what's really neat about our dynamic here is we all three have different specialties. You know, I think, um, you know, Ross, your agenda as a writer is different than my agenda. And, you know, Kyle, you're a little bit of a mix of of both of us a little bit. I think you're a little more, you know, you're you're liking the the challenge of of getting to the top and and doing that. And, you know, Ross, in my opinion, I think, Ross, you're really um, branching out on, you know, these these gnarly like bow ties and these big hippers. And I mean, you're you know, you're you're a little bit that generation. Yeah. Um, and so it's cool to see that we, I mean, we're all not the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I guess, you know, both of you guys, what's, I mean, what, what drives you, what motivates you, what, wh- when, what makes it a successful day for you, Kyle? I don't think I've ever had a successful day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes it a successful day. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. Every, every time I come home from a ride, I'm, not i'm thinking of more i'm watching the gopro stuff like you idiot why didn't you carry more speed there to get above that tree and i'll think about that stuff time and time and time again i don't know yeah i don't i don't know if i I mean i've there's there's moments where you're like yes that was nice and more often than not though i don't know i'm thinking about what i should have done the the chase is so much of it huh yeah yeah just like always knowing that there's more or whatever and Mm-hmm. So you have to have that like never die attitude too, especially when you're chasing Chris around mm-hmm. because a, you're in the back as a sweep guy. Right. So things are, it's just different, right? It's, it's in some ways a disadvantage to get to the top if we're talking about a technical line. Mm-hmm. Um, so like for you to just like think that you're going to go up the line that 12 dudes have already tried 80 times and there's no snow left and all these things. If you don't have that attitude of never giving up, then you're going to, you're not going to last long in that role. Mm -hmm. And Kyle certainly has that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to ask both of you guys this question. Um, over, well, Ross, you've been with me multiple years, Kyle, you're on year three. What, give me, give me just one thing that either from, you know, what, watching or observing you know kind of like what i'm doing or um in your own writing critiquing what is the one thing that you is is top on your hit list of of a, a, an improved skill set like what are you like i 
the, the, I am working on this and I'm going to get better at this. So, like coming into those those lines where you have to be perfect and carry all the right speed in the bottom to get over the head wall, but most importantly, not just wheelie out of control over that head wall and get the drive at the next one. Um, there's a lot of just that body English that you have and you can, you, you're you down on the sled at the right time to soak up the big hit, but to continue the speed. I think this year, if I can do that, because there's a lot of, a lot of places I kind of, I can get the, the first part done and then it screws you for the rest of it mm-hmm. where to get over that first part you need to still be going 30 miles an hour to to get up the next part we had yeah. one yesterday didn't we yeah that, it took me four runs <laughs> yep <laughs> that one at the at the bottom of the hill and and it was one of those deals where you you had no in run you had to come out of the corner and there was a, a little head wall arise with some junk in there and trenches and you know, I had, I, again, cause I, I'm always the cheater, but I, I was on a 63 and you were on a 155 still a, the 55, it eventually made it. But mm-hmm. you know, it was, as I'm watching there, it's, it's like it, it, to your point, you have to be so perfect in those situations to be able to make it. And I think what's awesome for us is, you know, some people's mindset is, so they get up over that first head wall in a wheelie, set it down, go to the next one. Don't even come close to making it turn out and say, Oh man, that one's, that one's sure tough. And you know, we look at it as we are getting up there. Yeah. This, I just screwed up bigger than crap. What do I got to do to get up that? There's no, there's no, Oh, you can't make it up that. Yeah. There's something you can do something, whether it's switch back six times or Whatever yeah. it is. And you're violently rolling your snowmobile back down so you can get to the bottom as fast as possible yeah. <laughs> so you can get back up to the top as fast as possible. Oh, well, I mean, three days ago, I almost ran myself to the point of, like, exhaustion. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't fog goggles, like, <laughs> ever. And I had this sweatband across my goggles. My neck was bleeding. My <laughs> shoulder was like, I think I might have dislocated it. Yeah. And just because I was so... I am getting to the top of this freaking hill. <laughs> and I did, but uh, there was some, uh, there was, it was a war zone. Ross, what's, I, what's, what's yours? I think um, mine is consistency. Cause when I feel like I'm good, I'm good. Like when I'm on, I feel really, really good. But then there's certain little things that are all most that are all mental that. Um, yeah. You're a head case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, but it's what yeah, we talk about. Yeah. I think a lot. And especially to um, one thing that I want to work on and get better at is into the technical stuff more so again, because now my riding is different than Chris's because mm. I am typically with the different group. Yep. So I am in, I'm in the more open stuff. And, you know, for me, like for me to have the successful day, I need to go find a jump or something like that because I'm not down in the hole um, because my guys are going to punch me in the face if I sure. go in there. So that's just what it's kind of become. That's why I wear my helmet all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I know it's coming. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of how my riding has changed a little bit because that's just where I ride now for, for work. Yeah. Um, so that's how I en- enjoy it. But f- yeah, that just like being consistent is a, a tricky part, you know, like, uh, a couple days ago I was on an 800, 155 chaos and you're on a 163 pro 850. So like there's three or four things working against me and just not, and just understanding the sled I'm on and riding to its, yep to its quote unquote strengths instead of trying to force things. So, and that's always been my issues. I'm just too greedy and too forceful with lines. And then I screw up and then you get tired and it just leads down the, that road. One thing that I see with your riding, and and I'm going to refer back to the same day you're talking about. So on our off day here up at Grizzly, we uh, we were filming, right. so trying to get some content. And, you know, the first the first couple lines, they just weren't going good. Um, there were some rocks, and there was some things. And so, like, you know, you have this vision in your head of what the move's supposed to do, and then it doesn't, and you the sled gets 
buried bigger than crap. And then, so, you know, we talk about this all the time too. So now you're using more effort, Mm -hmm. you get tired. And then uh, when you're fatigued, then you hesitate. And when you hesitate, then the next line, then you fail again. And so we had, you had, you had a couple of those in a row. And even I, I mean, I did, I was, you know, I, I was having a couple of those moments as well. And then, but it's really cool. And, and to your point is it takes one of like, dude, I nailed that. And that yeah. was hard. Yeah. And it, and it can turn it. It's, it's crazy. Like you're still the same rider, right? But mentally it, it, you can, you can change the, the whole day mm-hmm. um, and, and really make it successful. And I think you did that just the other day. And, and, you know, for all you guys listening out there, we all, we all have those days where it like, we're, we're not riding good. We, we get stuck doing stupid things. Um, and so it's really, you have to fight through that. You have to push through it. You have to, and you can't just go into seclusion mode and then just start buzzing around in meadows to make you, yourself feel better about it. You yeah. got to You got to get through it. And, you know, it's, this is, I had something happen two days ago that hasn't happened to me in a long time, in a long time. I, I rode tired yeah. because I was tired. We, it, you know, it was day five in a row. The previous day we spent filming, which is like riding at a hundred percent all day. And I didn't, I didn't sleep very well. I was beat up. And so, you know, I'm, I'm guiding and I mean, I am making stupid mistakes and I'm getting greedy and I'm getting stuck. And then I'm doing like everything that I talk to the clients about. I mean, I'm living it. I had a GoPro clip and I, I had just got stuck. I get unstuck and I was pissed off because I got stuck in a stupid spot. I told you guys this story. I'm like, I'm looking at it and I wanted to go above this tree so freaking bad. And it was like, I, I, I'll give my, myself a shot. If it's 50, 50, you know, 50, 50, I'm going to make it or get stuck. Those are pretty good odds for me. Most of the time, this was like 30, 70. It was just really dumb. And sure enough, I try it and I get stuck and I'm just upset and then I have to get my sled unstuck and then I go under the tree and I'm like okay time for a redemption line and I go and I didn't take a break I had no water all day because it was cold and so I go and I go I, I make another stupid mistake and I shoved the, and I we lead up on this rock and I shoved the front end straight down into this boulder field and the ski had to be like touching the ground yeah I mean yeah. and I'm just like and I I stopped the GoPro or, uh, you know, with the GoPro roll, I'm like, man, I'm riding like poop. <laughs> I mean, I, that's exactly what I said. And, um, and you know, that for me, I don't, I don't necessarily have many of those days. Mm-hmm. I feel, you know, I'm mentally strong. I know, I know what the day is going to be. I know, you know, I, I picture all these things happening in, in the line and, and, but you know, it just, just like everybody, I mean, I had an off day. And so, you know, it was my goal yesterday to redeem that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing what the body needs too. Um, I mean, I, I just needed, I needed more water. (laughs) I needed some food during the day. I need, you know, when, when, when your mind isn't right, your body isn't right either. And, you know, yesterday I had, I thought, I mean, it was an awesome day. You know, I, I rode really good. I pulled some lines that, um, for me, make it a successful day. And I was like, okay, we're back. We're back. Yeah. Well, so, that's a good. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's a success. That, that was, that was my, my story. Yeah. I think it's just, and it, you know, early season is always tricky too. I mean, it's December and, um, there's not, there's plenty of snow to go ride. But for some of the things that we're trying to do, especially we're not on our personal sleds. Yeah. And that also is tricky because you maybe are a little hesitant or whatever. And then is there a rock there? Am I going to swash out all these things? And then whereas, you know, a little bit later in the season or even on even on our personal sleds, like you're going to go into that thing with your hair on fire and um, sort it out. But when you're on a you know, Outlaw Motorsports takes care of us up here, so we try to keep their stuff in pretty good condition. Which um, I have struggled with yeah. this trip. <laughs> the parts list is long. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, you 
you don't there's a little aspect of it that kind of can just slow you down a little bit and that is the difference especially that i've felt this trip on Mm -hmm. the 155 800 800 i'm like isn't it crazy to ride an 800 again dude i gotta be so uncomfortably aggressive to get up things and around things and it's like ugh, didn't i don't i don't like it and then even to do some of the fun things i like to do i'm kind of being a moron and like expecting the snowmobile to do things and it doesn't work every time like why isn't this working? Well, it's just not right, you know. And 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 I guess I don't want you guys to to take that as oh wow all the eight hundreds are are why would I ever ride one, you know for it we and we talk about this a lot, um, choosing the right tool for the job. Yeah. Right. That 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 eight hundred chaos one fifty five would be an incredibly fun sled in the right terrain. Yeah. But you're trying to chase me on a one sixty three. And a three inch mm-hmm. and pro, right? right? I mean, you picked, you picked a handsaw, and I'm riding a chainsaw with a turbo, yeah. right? Um, and so those, it's, you know, that brings me to another thing. You know, we we guide. That's that's our job. Yeah. And so our job is to get people comfortable with a new skill set, teaching them how to be on edge go in, in all this fun terrain and be in control and, you know, talking about picking the right sled for the job. I've never seen one so drastically wrong as I did, um, in our first group here when we had, we had a person from Alberta, um, at who was just getting into mountain riding. He goes down to the dealership, <clears throat> says, give me the biggest, baddest thing that you have and I'll take it. Right. And mm-hmm. so this dude who's like five, seven hundred and forty pounds shows up on a one seventy five do that is I mean, it was the worst snowmobile you could ever have for this poor guy who was trying to, to learn how to mountain ride and, and, and get into the sport and and it was a terrible I mean, he was scared of the power. Mm-hmm. He I mean, couldn't counter steer couldn't couldn't do anything because he was just the the sled was wrong for him and we see this a lot we see guys who show up on turbos who shouldn't be on turbos we see guys um with the the big 174 which like what what are you doing right i mean yeah are there days of 174 or or places that people need and want a 174 of course right but you know it all depends on what your agenda is but you know talking about that 800 um you know for what you were trying to do it's not the right sled but um you know that's i think and i guess you know kyle this this leads me to a topic for you guys too um if you could only have one sled configuration what would it be would it be 55 yeah, sixty three, sixty three cut tunnel, right? I mean, what Kyle? What's what? You've you've got to ride a bunch. What's your what's your go to? Um, it's tough. It's it's a tough pick. The Here. there, mic up better. There you go, dog. <laughs> Just watching out for you. <laughs> it's a it's a tough pick. It it seems really situational and day by day what you prefer. It is. Yep. But yeah. if I was gonna have one slide, it would be a stock. 163 short tunnel i think Mm -hmm. and get i and you only get you only get i'm gonna give you three you only get three accessories what what are you picking skins helium hood Mm -hmm. whoa power move ah skins brake lever heated brake lever and um a lightweight can with a cooker on it dang no no shocks yeah i only gave him three the stock package is pretty. Is, is, it gets the job done. You can ride it. All right, Ross. Yeah, what's your? You what, can ride it. Okay. What's your three? Um, well, my three would be shocks. Is uh-huh. gonna be first for sure, and then probably shocks, tie can, and a lever would be the things that would really. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. But I don't, dude. The thing is, is if if I didn't ride in Colorado every day and I traveled. At like if I was going to go ride Idaho and Oregon and you know um, Colorado, I'd probably ride a fifty-five, um, a fifty-five short tunnel for what I like to do. Um, Hold on now, fifty-five short tunnel. Heck yeah! Are you sure? It'd be sick. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, it, and 
that's because it's so funny riding with you the whole package would would be different right yeah it would it, be. in yep um but if i had one sled and i was going to ride multiple areas multiple conditions all season long it'd be the 55 because it's just you can still get it done you, you gotta just ride the heck out of it and yep i enjoy that process as well i i i I like I like that thought as well, and I think that's what's tough is like would I go fifty five or would I go Kyle's route and go sixty three with short tunnel because you kind of get both benefits. Mm -hmm. um, for me and what I like to do, I think I would probably still have to go with the sixty three and then um, you know do the short tunnel. But um, does the sh does the short tunnel count as one of our three? Ooh, <laughs> see here's the problem. I was thinking I'm like I gave you guys three and. My mandatory list is like 12. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm, I'm right there with you guys. I mean, I am a, you guys know I'm a shock guy. I'm a heated brake lever guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but what a, I was thinking about what, what do we bring to Grizzly? I mean, those are our essentials, right? In the past, I've brought a tie can in my suitcase. Yeah. I have brought um, a heated brake lever. Um, I, and... I saw someone, you know you're getting old when you ride the backcountry with gauntlets. Well, I am 42. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, my hands are warm, and I enjoy that fact of being comfortable out there. And so, I mean, I, I brought gauntlets, right? And so I, I enjoy riding with – I just enjoy being comfortable. That, that's all there is to it. Um, you know, last night when we were coming out, and I looked back, and Kyle's going like this, <laughs> like, trying to get blood yeah. to his hands. I'm like mm – -hmm. And I pull mine out, and they're, like, steaming, and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, um, shocks, brake lever, gauntlets. You know the other thing? I mean, it would be tough to live without my my handlebar bag. Yeah. You know, we, we yeah. use the we yeah, use the, we're going to count those, too. That's I, and, and that's, you know, so we use the Sled Solutions carry-all bag. Um, and then, well, heck, now we're – since we're talking about that, I mean, I can't live without my tunnel bag. No. We got to have our essentials. You know, we use the Polaris yeah. large tunnel bag. Um, and then, you know, all the other things, they're, they're bonuses for sure, right? I mean, yeah, I'd love to have a, a, a lightweight tie can or SLP can or something with a cooker. Is it mandatory? No. Do we really like it? Yes. The Kurtz gear down kit is another one, right? I, yeah. I got on a sled yesterday. So to your – I okay. I'm going to re rewind. I got on a, on a customer's sled yesterday. He got stuck. He had Barant shocks, a 155, yeah. Zollinger lightweight rotating package, um, a Kurtz gear down kit, five-inch bar. I mean, it was like a sled that we, we ride, yeah. right? And I got on it literally for about 45 seconds. I'm like, dude, this thing rips. Yeah. Like, I want to ride this thing. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it is really cool to feel – the shocks instantly. I mean, mm -hmm. the sled I've been riding, like it, it just doesn't want to come up out of the snow as well. And I got on this one, and it's and it's it was a one fifty five, and I'm riding one sixty three, and that fifty five just brrrr, like instantly track speed got up on top. I was able to get up over this big log, and I'm like, dude, your sled rips. You're you shouldn't be stuck right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know when we talk about all the go tos and. Uh, there's, there's many of them, but yeah. you know, really, you know, thinking about it, it wasn't our go-tos aren't performance based. It's, no, it's comfort based yeah. a yeah. lot, yeah. right? Your heated brake lever, helium hood to have your stuff warm and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. shocks, have, right? That's shocks. a comfort. That's a comfort for sure. Yeah. And the handlebar, I mean, the bags are like, that's a necessity. It is a necessity. It's funny when you see a guy pull up without any bags. Yeah, what? Where? Where's all your where's stuff? All your st and we, I'm like overflowing. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any room for anything. I need. We more. need a trailer. Yeah, I want a <laughs> seat that just opens up and just has. Yeah, I can just fill it with things. Because there's so much stuff we need out there, especially in our role as guides, right? We have to have our first aid and our emergency stuff and our tools. I mean, our toolkits are like 20 pounds sometimes. Yeah. But you think about that, though, is like, so, yeah, we say, okay, we're guides and that's our job. But, I mean, when the general public, I mean, 
they're they're riding the same thing we are and the same things can potentially happen and if you are not prepared for the situation then you're really asking for trouble like yeah. big time and you know we always say it doesn't take a lot of stuff it just takes the right stuff to carry um and we've got that I think we've got that fairly dialed. There's always some times when we're like, oh, man, I need, I wish we had that. We, you're always learning yeah, things that you need, yeah. We're learning. We'll have to do a, a, a breakdown of, of, of what, what we carry what we and carry. why. Yeah. That'd be a good a good one. Uh-huh. And it's funny that you said that because around Thanksgiving, I went home, I flew home for a couple of days, and I could have gone and kind of rode. But I like one of the factors why I didn't ride is I didn't have my tunnel bag. Oh, I was like, feel naked. Oh, it's, it. I'm like, I don't have any of my stuff to, if anything happens on any level, I don't have anything yep. to deal with it. And that's not fun. So, yeah. Well, when we take, uh, you know, client sleds up for uh, just for that little test trip and I really don't have anything, I'm like, I feel, okay, I need to be within walking range of the truck <laughs> because yeah. uh, I don't know what the heck could happen here. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's a necessity, and I think that's what a lot of people need to get better at too. In the uh, is being prepared, is being prepared. Yeah, right. Prepare for the the worst plan, or hope for the best. Prepare for I don't know how that saying goes. Yeah, you know the deal. Well, we got ten more. We got ten more minutes. So I want to uh, I want to ask you a question, Kyle. So you you are in the back of the mayhem that I create, mm-hmm. right? I'm t- leading the group, trying to get the group up to our our specified place, our goal, right? Yesterday was a prime example of this. Uh, you know, I put one nice, super clean track. I'm like, all right, boys, it should be good. And then I come down and I look, and it looks like World War Three happened down there. <laughs> and um, so you get to see all of this mayhem. And like Ross said, you ride the junk back there and, and everything. And it's really made you a lot better rider and more aggressive and, and uh, ability to ride neutral more. But for, for the folks at home, you know, who haven't had the opportunity to come see us and see it in person and learn from what we do, what, I mean, what's the biggest thing that you see, um, that, that people need to work on? I would say, the timing of their making their move because when you're in those trenches, the first guy was it can carry a ton of momentum and and just reading terrain and what the sled's doing on what you need to make for a decision. Where when you're in those trenches, there's certain spots you can stop and you need to be building momentum in the right spots and not just driving into a driving into the obstacle and then blowing through it like instead of building the momentum up the line. Mm-hmm. And that, would I would say, is the biggest thing, is just the, the timing and the situational, where to where to stop and where to go and where to be going fast and where to be going slow. And all well, of it changes one, every time. One, every, every person that goes up it, the next person needs to approach that line different. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I think the biggest thing we see is always hesitation, right? Mm-hmm. Hesitation kills. And then when you don't carry any momentum, you're trying to, to, you, then you're getting bounced in every single thing. And it's, and it's hard. It's hard to look at a situation like that and say, okay, I need to go faster because we've also seen the opposite. We've seen guys that just go 900 miles an hour through that out of control, no finger on the brake probably eyes closed or something's happening there mm-hmm. and you know wheeling it up and then they end up in the tree or something so it's a it's a really fine balance and i think the other thing you know we we think about like that situation well a lot of people just avoid the situation 100 yeah. percent. Uh, how many times have we heard oh i hate riding tr- ruts Mm-hmm. Well, oh. they hate riding ruts because they don't do it. And yeah. so then, again, your riding level will plateau 100%. Yeah. Y- you will only be able to take your riding skill set so far if you avoid what you're not good at. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times when you see those lines from other people and their GoPro clips on Instagram and stuff, you don't see much of the trench riding. The hill climb guys are insane in that aspect. But yep. Yeah, all you see is the pretty perfect lines that mm-hmm. exist once, and then it's a mess. <laughs> and then it's a disaster back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you making fun of me in my lines? No, no. <laughs> I know the way you can come <laughs> right back up through the mess too. Yeah, yeah. Which is one of the parts I enjoy. It's super fun mm-hmm. back there. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, Ross, what's uh, what's one that that you would tell these guys who are listening here? What's what's the one thing that you would point out? Um, <laughs> that it's the hardest thing to say to to do, and especially as you get tired, you do it more and more. Right? It's the same thing, and it works for all of us, and it's the only thing that I tell myself you know, a lot, especially when I get tired is keep your eyes up. Um, and that, but that l- lends to so many other things. Like that's the first thing to riding with momentum. And I think momentum is a, is a huge one too, is we are very good at understanding and feeling when that snowmobile is going to get stuck or when it is starting to get stuck. And that comes with seat time for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, being aggressive early on the gas to get up on top of the snow and then get going, um, instead of just like, trenching at half throttle moving four mm-hmm. miles an hour yeah um you know ha- getting up on top and then going forward fast is is something that is very key especially in deep snow and i i'm probably thinking of that now because we're in deep december mm-hmm. snow right now and that's yep. a big part of it because mm-hmm. um, once you start the site once you once you get below and you, you it's hard yeah, to, you get that get to get back, back up. up yeah so well and I think it's funny because it's 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 almost like a cop out answer. Well, your eyes were down. I mean, right. in every scenario where someone fails, most of the time it was, dude. All you had to do was, I mean, you you were staring right at the log and you drove into the log, yeah. or at the trench or whatever. And you know, that's it's funny that you say that's the one thing that you tell yourself all day yesterday. At the like after three o'clock, I mean, it was when I started my sled, eyes up, eyes up, let's go, keep, keep yeah. them up. We got to yeah. go, yeah. got to go. Yeah. I know you're tired, fatigued. We've been pulling on skis a bunch today. Keep them up, yeah. stay aggressive. And that day I was talking about two days ago where I was riding the struggle bus, I, I knew my eyes were down, but I was just, I couldn't do anything about it. <clears throat> I mean, I got into one of those states that our clients get into often of I was tired, I was defeated, and the vicious cycle, was I was in it. I was living it. And it was so funny how upset I was, like, laying in bed. I'm like, I cannot wait for tomorrow to get mm-hmm. that this feeling out of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a difference. I mean, someone might just think like that's what snowmobiling is, but for me, I know the difference. And so I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go fix that. I know what I need to do to fix that. And indeed I needed just a couple tweaks there. Um, to, and then, you know, to end on a day like yesterday, which was good. And then, you know, it, it to, to be honest, it, it was a slap in the face that I really enjoyed. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what, I mean, we talk about that all the time. I mean, we fail a lot. Yeah. And it's how you take that failure. Are you going to take it as a positive or a negative? Uh, mm-hmm. I took it as a positive. I wasn't all that positive about it while it was happening, right? Mm-hmm. I was upset at myself. Mm-hmm. But I took it as a positive. Um, and, I mean, I feel really, I mean, I think it's, it's it's setting the tone for me for the rest of the season. I learned, I learned some things and like what we always talk about, it's never a mistake or a failure if a lesson is learned. And I think those are really important things to, to learn anytime you get, whether it is you're getting stuck or you make a mistake on, uh, on the hill, you didn't bring something in your tunnel bag, right? We learn, as long as we learn from it, we're going to be okay. Right. And it, it's amazing how much of everything of the riding that we do is mental. Like if I don't, if I'm not fired up and like in my mind, if I'm not going to just destroy this line, I'm going to nail this thing. You don't ride, you get stuck in the metal. Yeah. Like, and then you go up, you get stuck, you evaluate what you did, you get out and you come at the same exact line, a different way to get to the top. And just with that, like, I know that there's moments when you don't, when you aren't that fired up and you know it, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it never yeah. works. Yeah, yeah. You can't force it. No, you can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I enjoy. I like just going at something and figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and being, well, it's the aggression of being a rider. Yeah. Like and you, you need it. You need it. You got especially. It. That's the biggest thing I see with clients too. When they start to get defeated, I'm like, this is about the worst thing you could do to yourself. Yeah. Don't do this. When you, when, <laughs> when you start, when you shake your head, you know, side to side with the no, 
Instead, it should be like, all right, let's go. Let's, uh, like, yeah. yeah, get fired up and go, go attack it. So yep. that's always a fun state to be, and I think that's what you know. Jumping way back to where we're talking about, you know, when we ride together, it's that way. It's like, yeah, we, you, you you start nipping at each other, and then, <laughs> especially when Chris does something that if we both, Kyle and I both screw up or what, or we get in each other's way, <laughs> like he, he gets stuck in front of me or I get stuck in front of him, and you, we come up with a full head of steam and like, oh, dude, you're in my way, like I was gonna make it, <laughs> you know, all this is just because it's always changing. The train's always changing as we put lines through it and. You know, it goes back to the day that we had last year where Chris got up the head wall, like the eight foot head wall. And then I got stuck in his trench and then Kyle had to go right and he got stuck right next to me. And it was just a full <laughs> circle of. Yeah. And then I lost a double or nothing. Didn't yeah. I? Yeah, yeah. Same exact spot. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave you guys with uh, with this message. Um just remember when you're out there riding, you know, it's it. some of you guys can relate to what we're talking about here as far as, you know, being aggressive and, and getting stuck. And, and but there's a lot of riders out there that, um, you know, maybe maybe don't push like what we're what we're talking about here and don't enjoy getting stuck upside down in the tree and all of that stuff. But, you know, one thing that I always leave my groups with here is you we spent three days exposing you to what is possible on a snowmobile, giving you a new skill set that you've never had and having you look at terrain like you've never looked at it before. Now I want you to go home and instead of riding like you rode before, I want you to think what line would Chris Barant make me take? And, um, it makes a lot more fun, a little more challenging, um, pushes yourself. Yeah. We don't want you to go out there and wreck snowmobiles. Um, we do want you to push yourself, uh, because it's, it's really cool. And we talk about this a lot is when there's more work involved and it's a harder challenge, the reward is so much better on the other end. Mm -hmm. And I think we could all attest to when we get to the top of one of those lines. I mean, I did one yesterday where I was just like, it feels damn good to be sitting where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And I know no one else is making it up here. And, you know, I sit up there for a few and. All right, I can go home now. I feel really good. Yeah, that is a fun feeling. Yeah. Well, we did it. Kyle, do you have any messages? No. Oh, not, okay. Not a ton. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Kyle. No. Um. Yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, um. Yeah. We. Uh. It's again. Just. Uh. We're very appreciative for all you listeners out there. Um. It's. We really enjoy this. We like talking about snowmobiles. Uh, I won't lie, this morning we all got up early after, uh, well, this will be day six in a row riding, and we were like, uh, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, we start talking about snowmobiles, and I'm all fired up. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks, guys, for listening. Um, be sure to leave a review on iTunes. That helps um, a lot. Tell your friends, share stories. Um, yeah, we appreciate it a bunch, and we'll bring you more more madness. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you in uh, episode 17. Yep, it'll most likely be from Colorado. So Colorado. Enjoy, enjoy Christmas, New Year's, and uh, we'll be back shortly. See you in the first of the year. See you guys.